we recently settled a sexual abuse case um, for ten million dollars, which we believe is the largest settlement in California for a single victim of sexual abuse. This was a very tragic situation involving a young girl. She was 11 years old when she um, started to get uh, raped by her mother's live-in boyfriend. She told a teacher what was happening. Um, the Riverside County Child Protective Services Agency opened up an investigation. They came and interviewed her. The boyfriend uh, allegedly left the country and um, Child Protective Services completed their investigation, closed their file. Our client's mother supposedly got a restraining order against the perpetrator. And then a few months later, Child Protective Services was called back out to the home because there was a, there was a call about domestic violence happening in the home. And they show up and they find that the boyfriend is back in the home. What happens next over the course of the next six months or so is a couple of different investigations by Child Protective Services, but nothing happens. They do nothing to um, protect this girl. They don't notify the police of the fact that the perpetrator is back in the home. They don't remove the girl from the home. They, they allow her to stay there. They allow the perpetrator to stay there. And about two years later, it's discovered that she's pregnant at the age of 13. Um, she gave birth uh, at the age of 14, gave the baby up for adoption. Just a horrific situation. It was a challenging case because governmental agencies in California and, and in most states have immunity for most decisions that they make. And so the challenge in the case was to show that this was not a situation where the government had immunity. In fact, this was a situation where the government, where the CPS uh, social workers had a mandatory duty to report the fact that this girl was, was subjected to sexual abuse. That was a case that settled at, at mediation uh, just a few months ago, like I said, for $10 million. Yeah.